Bloodborne pathogens. It's an impressive name, but the meaning behind it is simple, and so are the steps you can take to protect yourself. All it requires is that you know the facts, practice good hygiene, and take a few sensible precautions. Bloodborne pathogens are disease-causing organisms. They're transmitted by contact with blood or body fluids that are contaminated with blood. A bloodborne pathogen may not cause any symptoms for years, maybe not ever. So it's possible for infected people to feel and look fine and to spread the pathogen without knowing they are infected. Three bloodborne pathogens, all viruses, are of special concern. Human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, hepatitis B virus, HBV, and hepatitis C virus, HCV. HIV, HBV, and HCV are carried in the blood and in semen, vaginal secretions, and body fluids containing visible blood. Body fluids also can carry other infectious pathogens. That's why you should treat all blood and body fluids as potentially infectious and take steps to protect yourself. You've probably heard of HIV infection, which attacks the immune system. When infected people lose their ability to fight infection, they become seriously ill. Although many people infected with HIV go on to develop AIDS, the number who develop serious illnesses and who die from AIDS is decreasing due to recent treatments. As yet, there is no vaccine to prevent HIV infection. Hepatitis B and Hepatitis C are both viral infections that affect the liver. If you become infected with HBV or HCV, you may have no symptoms at all, or you may feel like you have an intestinal flu, or you may be so sick you have to be hospitalized. Eventually, you could die from these diseases. That's why it's so important to understand the risks of contracting HIV, Hepatitis B, and Hepatitis C. The better you understand the risks involved, the easier it is to take simple measures to protect yourself and your co-workers on the job. Fortunately, HIV, HBV, and HCV aren't as easy to catch as many other viruses. They aren't spread through the air like cold and flu germs, so you won't get them from working alongside someone who is infected, from touching, or even from a kiss on the cheek. And you don't have to worry about catching these viruses from eating utensils, water fountains, gym equipment, swimming pools, or mosquitoes. HIV, Hepatitis B, and Hepatitis C are primarily spread by three types of body fluids, blood, vaginal secretions, and semen. These viruses can also be passed from pregnant women to their unborn infants. But to actually get one of these diseases, the virus must get inside your body. This most commonly happens during sex with an infected partner, or when intravenous drug users share needles that are contaminated. Because of the way HIV, HBV, and HCV are spread, you aren't likely to get them during the normal course of the workday. But it could happen in unusual circumstances. Suppose you're helping an injured co-worker and you get infected blood or other potentially infectious material on your skin. If your skin has open sores, nicks, or cuts, you could be infected. Or suppose you come across broken glass or a needle that is contaminated with blood from an infected person. If you puncture your skin with the object, you could be infected. Normally, your skin acts as a protective barrier to keep viruses out. But even tiny breaks or cracks in the skin from common conditions like dermatitis, acne, or cuts and scratches can be doorways for HIV, HBV, or HCV to enter your body. A virus can also get inside your body if contaminated blood or other potentially infectious materials splash into your eyes, nose, or mouth. To keep yourself safe, you must learn to recognize risky situations and know how to respond safely. 
These risky situations generally fall into three areas. Accidents and other injuries, cleanup after accidents, and routine janitorial and maintenance activities. If someone is injured, protect yourself before you offer assistance. Shut down machinery. Notify emergency responders in line with your company policy. But don't rush in to be a hero until you protect yourself. Put on a pair of leak-proof gloves. Your goal is to prevent contact with the victim's blood and body fluids while you control bleeding. In the rare instance when blood is spraying, protect your eyes, nose, and mouth with goggles and a mask. Once any bleeding is under control, you do not need to give further assistance. Just comfort the injured person and wait for a trained emergency responder to arrive. Sometimes you may get blood on you before you can protect yourself. If you get blood on your skin, wash it off as soon as possible with non-abrasive soap and water. If blood or other potentially infectious materials get into your eyes, immediately flush your eyes with running water at a sink or eye wash fountain, and then report the incident to your supervisor. Once the accident victim is cared for, the emergency is over. But the hazard isn't gone until the area is cleaned of all traces of blood and body fluids. This should only be done by specially trained employees, maintenance, or janitorial staff. Always restrict access to contaminated areas until properly disinfected. Cleanup personnel must wear gloves to protect their hands from contact with blood or other potentially infectious materials. With large amounts of blood, they should also put on smocks to protect their work clothes. Use absorbents such as disposable towels to soak up the blood. Then clean the area with an approved disinfectant solution. Dispose all waste contaminated with blood or other potentially infectious materials in a sealed, color-coded, or labeled leak-proof container and dispose of as infectious waste. After you finish cleaning, immediately disinfect the mop and other non-disposable cleaning equipment. Otherwise, you might spread viruses to other areas of the company. Accidents are not the only time when maintenance and janitorial staff may confront blood and other potentially infectious materials. That's why you must protect yourself, even during routine cleaning and maintenance tasks. For example, if vomit, urine, or feces contain visible blood, you could be exposed to bloodborne viruses. Even when no blood is visible, other infections may be present. Always wear gloves when you clean surfaces that may be soiled with body fluids or excretions. If you have to clean up large amounts of contamination, also put on a smock or apron to protect your clothes. Be alert for sharp objects such as broken glassware or used syringes when emptying trash containers. Never pick up shards directly with your hands. Use a device such as a brush and dustpan. Be sure to put contaminated sharp objects in puncture-resistant, leak-proof containers. Place all other contaminated wastes in leak-proof containers and dispose of them according to company policy. Handling laundry can also be risky. Bags of laundry sometimes conceal contaminated items, like bloody rags and clothing. Even contaminated needles or other sharp objects might be in a laundry bag. And when sorting laundry, be careful to protect yourself. You never know what might be on or in there. It's important to remember this whenever you handle laundry or trash. Always carry bags by the top. Never hold them against your body or place a hand underneath to support them. No matter what your job, some common sense precautions can help protect you from infection. Keep your hands away from your face, especially your nose, mouth, and eyes. Remove any protective clothing and wash your hands before you eat, drink, smoke, apply cosmetics or lip balms, or handle contact lenses. Hand washing is one of your best defenses against spreading infection, including HPV, HCV, and HIV. 
always wash your hands with soap and water after contact with blood or body fluids, even if you wore gloves. Be sure to also wash them at the end of your shift and after you remove your work gloves. Be sure you know what to do in an emergency before an emergency occurs. Find out whether your company has trained emergency personnel and know how to contact them. Never take unnecessary risks. In an emergency, shut off machinery, sound the alarm, and do whatever you must to save a life. But don't touch blood or body fluids without wearing gloves. Use a pocket mask to administer mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Plan ahead to protect yourself from blood and body fluids. Put on leak-proof gloves before you help injured persons. If blood is spraying, even the goggles and dust masks you use on the job can help keep blood and body fluids out of your eyes, nose, and mouth. If you get blood or body fluids on your gloves, clothes, or shoes, remove them as soon as possible and place them in a sealed bag. Next, wash exposed skin with non-abrasive soap and water. Then, find out from your supervisor what your company's policy is for decontaminating or disposing of contaminated items. Never clean up blood or body fluids unless you are trained to do so. Then, be sure to follow your company's policies to the letter. Finally, if you think you may have been exposed to HIV, HPV, or HCV, don't panic. Report the incident immediately to your supervisor. If possible, try to determine the source of the blood or body fluid, or even get a sample if possible. Your employer can advise you about testing, counseling, and any follow-up steps. Protecting yourself from blood-borne diseases on the job requires knowing the facts, practicing good hygiene, and taking a few sensible precautions. These measures are vitally important to your health and even your life. Take them seriously.